AC on, traction control off, check engine light off. Let's see what we got. Oh, oh, oh. Every time, every time in that spot. Welcome back to another episode of M-Tech. We have my M3 behind me. I know it's been a while, but I promise there's a really good reason for my absence. Today, we are finally going to put my misfire issue to rest once and for all. If you look on my right, you will see a photo with the red circle on it. That is the underside of my intake manifold. The reason you're looking at that photo right now is because I finally had my car at a shop. I was able to get an appointment and they diagnosed a bad CCV. Now I did a CCV a bit over a year ago and it already clogged up. You can see in the photo, the thing is just covered in oil. If you're watching my Instagram, you would know why this happened, even though the CCV is not that old. But for the rest of you, stay tuned. If this is not my issue, it is at least an issue. So it's definitely good that I have the parts here with me, uh, wherever the parts box went. And we're gonna get it fixed. And hopefully, once we get it fixed, the car is gonna run a thousand times better. We can go rip it, which I've wanted to do for so long. It's really been the reason I haven't been making videos, but let's go ahead and get started. So the first step in the job to replacing the CCV is going to be to remove this whole intake elbow. I've shown how to do this in other videos. So click up here if you wanna see how to remove this, but we're gonna go ahead and just take off the throttle behind this whole intake. All right, and now with the throttle body assembly off, well, kind of, the intake I said over there, and then I do wanna note the, all your throttle bodies, you can just leave this all in here. Last time I did the CCV, I also, I took this out, but that's because I was doing, I replaced it. I'm gonna try to leave it in here for now and see if I can get away with it. I'll, we'll see if I can leave this in here, but the next step you're going to want to do is basically clear out a bunch of room. So the ICV, the idle control valve, sits right down here. And if you haven't cleaned it out before and you've owned your car for a while, I would definitely recommend cleaning that out because this is perfect time to do it. You have access to it. I cleaned mine out a year ago. I'm going to see if I can leave that in there because it's kind of a pain to pull back out and rather not mess with it. But our next step is going to be to pull the alternator duct off because the CCV sits right there. I'm trying to flashlight right on it. So essentially our goal is we're gonna have to get that thing off of there and obviously get our two hoses from it. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull the alternator duct off and kind of mess with things. All right, so I took the alternator cooling duct out, which if you're trying to get it out and you're struggling with it, there's these two little tabs here. Just kind of try to wiggle it off of these and then just pop it off the alternator and be careful because it will be fragile. We got super lucky here. I'm really happy because we do not have to move the ICV. So for the CCV, there are these two bolts down here, one and two that hold the actual CCV to this bracket here, which is like the idle control valve, crankcase vent valve bracket. And then this line up here kind of goes down to it. And then your second line, which you're gonna have to disconnect is that one you can see down there by the dipstick, which is all oily. So what you're gonna do is just disconnect this line down here, undo those two bolts, which look like eight millimeters to me, maybe they're tens. And then disconnect this line up here. All right, everyone. Yeah, I was gonna film a little bit of montage for you guys, but it is super duper annoying to do this job with the ICV in. I managed to do it without removing the ICV, but if your ICV hasn't been cleaned to make itself easier, I would definitely go ahead and remove that, which we come over here. I'm actually missing some bolts, but it's just this bracket right here. And then you, this whole thing can kind of just unbolt from this like rail and you give yourself a bunch more wiggle room. But for the CCV, it'll be easier to explain this way. It's sitting this way in your intake manifold. And I lied, it is two, uh, three, not two bolts. You have one, two, three, you get these little guys out. And then you have this hose, which goes to the dipstick, which by the way, uh, look at how oily that thing is. I would not be surprised if this was my issue. And then obviously you have from the other end, this guy, which comes up from there into your valve cover. And this little grommet, which I didn't end up buying a new one of, so we're just gonna reuse this. What I'm gonna do now, and this is something I should have did with the last CCV job I did, is I'm gonna pull out the dipstick and clean it out because the dipstick, since this tube is intertwined with the dipstick, I'm gonna guess what happened is there was a bunch of gunk inside of the dipstick already. And what happened is all that carbon deposits, all the dirt, grime, everything, got sucked up right into the CCV. And then that's why it got clogged after a bit over a year. So the dipstick as well, if you wanna pull it out, it's just normally it would be one bolt here, except uh, I don't have mine in, which is something I'm gonna put in so I can actually use my dipstick. And then 
There's a couple small things clipped to it and then dipstick just literally the whole tube just pulls out and you can kind of see now I got it like out. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this out and I'm gonna inspect the inside of it and we're gonna go ahead and throw it back together. Now you can see in front of us, we have our dipstick tube. The only advice I can really give you when pulling this out is go slow and be careful. You can see the brackets here, this is for the vacuum hoses. You kind of just peel these away and the hoses pop out. When you get in there, you see what I'm talking about. And then your seal is at the bottom here, which I mean, this thing totally, it literally snapped off. So this is probably original and you can see all this gunk and grime on the dipstick tubes. This is part of what we're gonna be cleaning off. And then if I pull the dipstick itself out here, Kind of take a look into the tube. Uh, the camera is definitely not going to pick it out, but there is some gunk and stuff in the tube. So generally, I'm just going to kind of clean this thing off. I am going to replace these two seals and get this guy cleaned out. So let's get started. Alrighty everyone, so now we have the new seals on our dipstick. We cleaned off the dipstick and I'll be honest, it was pretty dirty. Coming over here, we now have our new CCV, our new hose, and then another hose. Uh, that's it right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and button all this up. I think I kind of showed everything I needed to show here. I will say if you are doing this like I am and you're not removing the ICV, that third bolt on the bottom left corner is gonna be really hard to get on. So if we're looking at the CCV, this bolt right here is really hard to get on and off. So I would torque this one down the least amount and focus more on this guy, which is easiest to get and this guy. And then of course, make sure you swap your grommets if you don't replace this onto your new one. But let's go ahead and wrap all this up and then let's give it a start and see how she runs. I guess we could say this is another episode of getting the M3 up the snuff because uh, with my dipstick here, I can now pull it out without using two hands because I bolted in the, uh, the bracket. So uh, that's definitely a win. But the real test is we got to hop in the car and start it. So let's come over here. I did clear the codes, but what was interesting is the codes were actually P1188, P1189, which are the fuel air mixture codes. Given the condition of the dipstick gaskets, I would not actually be surprised if that was my vacuum leak, or rather if that was a vacuum leak, but let's go ahead and start it. That sounds pretty good. And the tailpipe over here. Sounds like a slight mess with the motor. It's 100% running a lot better than it was. Given the state of those dips to go rings again, I think it was a vacuum leak. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this guy warmed up. We're gonna hop on the road and we're gonna go do a couple pulls and we're gonna see how it acts. If you guys saw how it did last time, it was okay, but it definitely choked up up top. It probably would not be a bad idea to get a new set of coils as well because the ones in there are absolutely ancient. They're at least a decade old, so. Could be as easy as that, but let's just get on the road and see how it acts. All right, everyone, we are now on the road and I can tell you immediately, as soon as I started this car, I could tell it's running. Oh, that was a really bad, ha! <laughs> Check control, whoop. Ow, lovely. Hey, my airbag light is now brighter. Who said hitting potholes wasn't good for your car? Uh, anyway, as I was saying, uh, I noticed immediately the car was running a lot better. I kind of heard a little stumble in the exhaust. I kind of sound like a misfire, but I don't know. That went away. So that's why I kind of just want to drive and see how how it acts. So far, it's doing really well. The good test right now is I'm going to throw the AC on. Full blast here. And that feels a lot better. It used to be when I do this, it would you could feel like it would start stumbling. Now, oh, okay, that feels pretty good. There's an on-ramp up here we're gonna kinda hit, and then on, on the way back, there's gonna be another little spot where we can do a pull at. But so far, it's it's passing with flying colors. I'm gonna turn the AC off. I don't wanna rob myself of precious horsepower. We only got 240 of them. Oh yeah, 
yeah, even even the the downshift, I can just tell it's way it's way more responsive. Oh yeah, look at this. Okay, he's gonna kind of he's gonna mess this up a little bit, but that was that's pretty good. Kids, don't don't let off the throttle in the turns. That's how you spin out. But there was definitely a lot of gunk in that tube, and then a lot of buildup of like I don't know what that was like oil or like dirt on the the hose itself and the CCD. So I'm gonna be lifetime warranting those through FCP Euro, which uh, you guys don't buy your parts from FCP Euro. Any of you, I highly recommend it. I mean, you never know when stuff like this is gonna happen, and sometimes you can really save your butt. I mean, it is only 80, 90 bucks, but still, that's 80, 90 dollars that I'm gonna save by having that lifetime warranty. I feel like every video I make is kind of just a, hey, look, my car broke, and then we fix it. And then sometimes it runs well, and sometimes it doesn't, but fortunately this time it's running well. I wanna branch off into other content, I just haven't been able to, because I've been so busy, and the car is just, you know, being an old BMW, I guess. <laughs> oh, yeah, I mean, that is... it. It's way smoother, and it's running a lot better, for sure. I mean, even, like, if I blip the gas, it's way faster to, like, bounce up, if that kind of makes sense. Uh, anyone who's ever driven their car with a vacuum, like, you guys would kind of know what I'm talking about. It's just... Or any kind of vacuum related issue, it just kind of feels sluggish and like it's not running that great. Or once this turns green, we're gonna we're gonna give her the beans. All right, here we go. pretty well. I almost feel like in third there was like a, a, a little bit of like a stutter and I don't know if that was me hitting a bump or if that's in like the way the car is running. I'm gonna have to watch that back and kind of pay attention. I don't know. Uh, definitely one and two. That was like uh, one billion jillion times better than it was. So I can live with that. Hey look the Z46. Give me a thumbs up. <laughs> I've been out on the road for a little while trying to see if the check engine light's going to come back and it hasn't come back. So I think we're going to call that good, at least for now. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to let me know in the comments down below. And of course, subscribe, hit that like button so you don't miss another video. We have lots of big plans for the summer. Well, whatever's left of it at least. It feels like we've blown away a lot of it, but that's okay. There's still plenty of time left to go and have a bunch of fun. Take care everyone, and I will see you in the next one.